Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Mitch and today I just wanted to show you the results of a little experiment that I did last time I did some resin. A lot of people say that it's really important to clean your tiles before you put resin on because the oils from your skin and your hands can repel the resin. I wanted to test how true that is and see what actually would repel the resin, uh, as in silicon oil. A lot of techniques that create cells, uh, a lot of people use silicon oil as a cell enhancer and that is well known for creating uh, divots and dents and fish eyes and things in your resin. So I did a little experiment and I wanted to show you the results of that experiment and how to fix uh, the results of this experiment. So let's go down to the table and I'll show you what I mean. So here I have two tiles that I did. I did a third one and that one's since been sold so that was great. And the experiment that I did was on one of the tiles I rubbed my forehead and my hands all over the tile and the other one I did only in certain spots. This tile I put silicon oil on it right before I put the resin on. I just dropped a couple of drops on there, wiped it over with a paper towel and then wiped as much of it as I could off, um, though I didn't use anything to dissolve the silicon. So the results of that are really interesting. So this is the one that I rubbed the oil from my skin all over. And when I say all over, I mean I did that all over here. So theoretically, if the resin was going to be repelled by my skin, all of this area should have been repelled, which it hasn't. Now it has from the edges a little bit, but that's because my tile wasn't level on my uh, plate here. And all of the resins moved to this bottom corner here. As you can see, that area is nice and perfectly resined and this side doesn't have anything. So the oil from your skin may repel the resin, but from my little test here, it did not. That's not to say that your skin won't do that. I am Maltese, I'm European. We have naturally oily skin. So it's something that I am very conscious of when I'm working and I will always clean my tiles. But that result just speaks for itself really. Um, like I said, the fo my forehead is so oily and I rubbed that all over this tile and nothing has been repelled. However, on the one with the silicon oil, like I say, I just rubbed the oil straight over the top. You can see all of that resin has been repelled from the tile. So oil will definitely repel the resin and this is what it looks like. So you'll see the sh really, really shiny bits where the resin is and the sheen that's on the parts where the resin is not is just the oil on the surface. So if you end up with this and you didn't clean your tile properly to start with, how can you fix that? So I'll show you. Here I have some 99% isopropyl alcohol and I always use 99.8% or 99%, 100%, whatever you can get. The higher the percentage, the better, but it has to be at least 70% isopropyl alcohol. And I've got some of that in a little nail polish uh, remover dispenser. I got this off Amazon, it was like $15 for a set of two. And this changed the game. Today I just resined a whole heap of coasters and it's so easy to use. You just put your paper towel, whatever you're using on there, push the pump down. Sorry, it's hard to get in focus. And the alcohol pops out the top. So a couple of pumps, paper towels wet, ready to go and I'm just going to wipe this one down because I will put a small second coat of resin on this one. Now with this one, we're gonna need a little bit more because we wanna get rid of all of that silicon oil from the surface. So give it a really, really good clean. All over there. And I'm pushing quite firmly on this so I can get as much of that oil off as possible. And then just to make double sure, I'm gonna flip my piece of paper towel over with more alcohol and go right in there again. And just give this a really, really good clean. Okay, so I've wiped that down. That's gonna be as clean as I can get that. And at the same time, I'm also going to apply some more resin to this canvas that I've got. Uh, you can see the edge there, it's not exactly perfect. Uh, I don't have anything supporting the back and I didn't spray it with water. So I didn't expect a perfect finish. I just use the canvases that I have to basically use up the leftover resin. And you can see that the finish isn't perfect. So I'm just gonna apply a second coat to that. 
So if you do a canvas and it turns out like that, where the floor, the finish isn't perfect, you can apply more resin to it. You don't have to sand it down. You don't have to do any anything special to it. I would just give it a quick clean with uh, the alcohol, as I've already done, and go over it once again. All right, so I will apply the resin to these. I'll do that on camera for you. Just give that another good quick wipe. Okay, and test this for level. There's my level. Level that way, level that way, great. Okay, put my alcohol aside. And let's mix up some resin. So I've got here my little fixer uppers and I've also got some coasters over there that I'm going to do. So I'll bring them in here so we can see them. And I've just got a little stick here. Uh, my bench isn't perfectly level so I'll just put, prop that up on there. Okay. So I'm just going to mix up my resin for eight tiles and those, or 10 tiles in that canvas, I'm only going to mix up about 100 mils of resin. So 50 mils part B, 50 mils part A. Now, since I've filmed that resin video, I had a representative from Stone Coat contact me and give me a handy little hint about mixing the Stone Coat resin. And what she said is to mix part B first into part A. So measure out your part B before you measure out part A. And what that does is stops the part A from sticking to the bottom of your cup and it allows for much better and easier mixing. And since I've tried doing that, it's completely true. It's so much easier to mix it and you don't get any lumps on the bottom of the cup that will prevent you from uh, reusing the cup later so it won't uh, stop it from setting properly. So that was a handy little hint and I believe it was from Christina Welch so thank you very much for that. Now I'm just getting a few things ready and starting my timer for three minutes on my stove because that's the time it takes to mix in the stone coat resin. I've got my heat gun on standby. So wiping down your tiles uh, prior to working is really important. As I've shown with that silicon oil, the silicon oil will most definitely repel any resin or any varnish that you put on top. It's one of the most common causes for uh, resin issues that I see other than incorrect mixing of the resin or the resin setting too quickly. So making sure that everything is 100% thoroughly clean before you start is really important. Um, especially if you use the same mixing sticks like I do. I use these mixing sticks for painting and for resin. If you're using these for both and you're doing techniques other than blooms where we don't use silicon at all to create the cells. If you're doing anything with silicon oil, make sure that you're washing every single utensil, cup, uh, plate, whatever you might use that comes into contact with both paint and resin, uh, washing that with alcohol first, the 99% alcohol, and then soap and water after that to get anything else off. And just making sure this is mixed up really well. And when you're mixing your resin, you'll notice it's really cloudy to start with. And once it's mixed all correctly, that will turn clear. You'll be able to see straight through it. That's when you know everything's combined and mixed. Mine has a hell of a lot of air bubbles in it because of how little volume there is in the cup. Normally, if you've got less volume in your cup, you're more likely to whip air into it. I'm not too fussed. I know that the stone coat uh, reacts really well to heat. So all I've got to do is blast it with the heat gun and that will be perfectly fine and it will all work out just fine for me. So again, I've got 50 mils of part B, 50 mils of part A in my little cup here. That makes 100 mils total resin. And I only use about 10 mils of resin on each coaster, sometimes a little bit less. And I've always got something to catch the drips on the, um, 
on the side of the coaster. So if I'm resining this coaster up here, I'll pour it over this one so that the drips go onto this coaster rather than wasting or being wasted, I should say. Slide in a little bit better. Okay. And we're at three minutes. So I'm going to pour on first my fixer upper tile. And because this already has a coat of resin on there, we're just trying to fill in the gap so it doesn't need an awful lot of resin on there. So that's why I only did 100 mils, even though I've got 10 tiles and I use about 10 mils of resin on each tile. Um, I didn't make up that much because I knew I'd only use about a half amount on those bigger ones. On the, oh, sorry, on those fixer uppers. So here we go, and you can see all of those bubbles in the resin. It looks like it's white and foamy to me. You might not be able to see it on the camera. And I'm going to leave the canvas for last, as that will collect all the drips. And again, that one's already done, it just needs a fixer upper. So when I'm working with my tiles for my resin work, I take them up in my hand and use my finger to spread the resin around. Now I'm going to just go to the edges with this. I won't coat the actual edges because I want all of that resin to stay on the surface. If any does drip down, that's perfectly fine, but I want it to stay in the middle and fill in all of those craters that that silicon oil created. So that's pretty much spread out nicely and it doesn't look level now but once I get the heat gun on there that will all level out and this one I do need to coat the edges and I need to make sure that they get done first so I make sure I've got some resin on my fingertip here and I just bring that around the edges that I need to fix up and I'll do this side make sure that those are covered first and then just give the rest of the tile a quick coat I like to call that because you're literally just going over the same area that you've already done and making sure that it's all covered thoroughly. So just as like doing your first coat, it's equally as important doing the second one or a touch up coat that you fill in all the nooks and crannies and try not to leave any areas uncovered because what will happen is that second coat will then dry with dips and divots in it and you'll have to do a third coat. And the more coats of resin you put on your tiles or coasters, the more cost it incurs to you, the more effort, the longer it takes to dry and cure. So these will be ready to remove the tape from tomorrow. But if I have to do a second coat, that's an extra day. Every extra day that you add makes it more difficult. Oops. Every day that you add makes it more difficult to remove that tape because the resin sets hard on the back. Still can be done. You just use your heat gun with the scraper attachment if it came with one. Uh, but it's much easier to take the tape off as I've done in my after resin video. Uh, I'll link that below Where 24 hours after I've done my resin I can just get a Stanley knife straight into that soft resin and peel it right off with the tape so Here we go as you can see I've got the holding the tile over another tile at the front And I'll show you a close-up of these tiles once I'm done because these are the ones that I did an experiment with with some nail glitter and I just did a bloom technique with just the nail glitter and cell activator and I did a black cell activator on a black pillow which was kind of silly because it all just blends in so it just looks glitter on black uh, but next time I'll definitely do something different might do a white cell activator uh, but I'm really happy with how they turned out. They do look a little bit, I want to say, crafty because it is just fine glitter after all. But when they are used in conjunction with my little piggy pigments and I've got some galactic looking uh, pores going on here, they just look amazing. It really adds another dimension to it. And these glitters, whenever you're doing your resin, I put a little bit of glitter in my resin. It just adds a little bit of extra sparkle to the tile really sets everything off and gives it a little bit more interest. You don't have to do that, uh, but it also hides a lot of things. So little dust flecks, uh, little imperfections or air bubbles, um, the, the glitter will mask all of that. So it's a handy little trick that you can employ to make your life a little bit easier and, you know, hide a couple of imperfections that are really common with resin. 
Now, in saying that on the topic of imperfections, you need to set up a tolerance that you are comfortable with, with what is perfect. So yes, we would all like that flawless, 100% smooth, reflective, glassy finish. But sometimes there's just one silly little air bubble or one little pet hair that gets in the way and ruins it. If it's a pet hair and it's really noticeable and it's sitting there on top of the resin finish and you can see it from a mile away, I would definitely do a second coat, possibly even sand that back because you may see it underneath. Just sand that little area. You don't have to sand the entire face of the tile, just that area and do exactly like I'm doing now uh, with that silicon oil tile. Just do a quick second coat to fill in the gap. Um, just sand it off, wipe it down, get rid of all the dust and then you're good to go. Uh, now, if it's a little air bubble, I wouldn't even bother. If it's marking the surface or something like that, I would not bother going in with a second coat and wasting a tiny batch of resin. And it's, the smaller the batch of resin you're working with, the more difficult it is to mix it accurately, uh, so it will set. So to fix one small air bubble, I wouldn't even bother. Um, I frequently just leave them, and customers don't notice. The only person who knows about it is you, and the only person who would really be bothered by it is you. So unless it actually affects the use of the coaster, i.e. it's making a big dent and you put a glass on it and it wobbles, that would be a problem. But if not, just leave it. Now I'm going to pick up my canvas here and just run my fingers around the edges, make sure they're all covered. Because the sides and the corners or the top edges are what needed some work on this. Just making sure that's all fixed up. Okay. Right there. That's all done, ready to go again. Right, so I'm going to take my gloves off now. This is why I always double glove so I can take off the top pair and I've always got a fresh pair underneath. And now I'm going to use my heat gun to pop all of the bubbles. So there were quite a few of them so I'm going to go over it once or twice and just really concentrate on getting that resin nice and liquid, getting all those bubbles out. Now I'll take you down for a detail shot so you can see all of the bubbles in there and once I get the heat gun on you can see them all popping. Now, I always do two bubble popping processes. I do the heat gun first, and then I go in with my little chef's torch and I pop the rest of them. So there's a lot of fine bubbles in here. So I get that torch in there and really blast them away. And you can see that resin clears right up. Again, make sure I've got everything. Okay, and there we go. So now I get my eyes down at eye level and I'm just going to move my light back to where it was before. Okay. So important when you're resining again to get a light down at the level that you're working at and always look at your work from the side. So you want to catch any imperfections while the resin is still wet 
and you can see everything. So I'm literally just getting down at eye level, making sure the light is passing over the coasters and checking to see if there's any dents or divots, any spots that I've missed. And I do tend to miss a lot of spots, so this is a crucial step for me. And I can see in my canvas here that I have a little glob of something. I'm just gonna scoop that out, wipe it on my table here. And the puppy pads are great for this because you can just scrape, scrape everything off. And I'm just going to heat that spot a little bit after I put some more resin on. Just right there. And just heat that up a little bit to make it flow nicely into the spot. Okay. Now that these are all done, I'm gonna put these on my rack, on my baker's rack close the flap and that's all the resin done for today. So you can see there that the silicon oil definitely repelled the resin whereas the oil from my skin didn't. That's not to say that it will not. So always take the best precaution that you can. Wipe your tiles down first, wipe your canvases down first before you apply resin or varnish to give it the best chance of holding that resin and not giving you issues that will need a second coat. Um, if you have bubbles, make sure you use your heat gun and torch them all out. You saw how easy that was. And I'm going to give this another minute or so uh, just to make sure that all the bubbles are rising to the surface. I'll torch them one more time and then I'll go onto my baker's rack to dry. Hopefully that answered a couple of questions if you've had issues with fish eyes or uh, resin repelling in the past. And hopefully you won't make that mistake again after seeing this video. So if you're liking these videos, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. I try to do that every Monday and it'll be a mix of tutorial style videos, artworks and all sorts of tips and tricks. So if you're liking what you see, definitely follow along and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys!